thank you, Denise, and thank you, DDO, for inviting me. I hope everyone's enjoying seeing Mars up close uh, tonight. I just want to come here and talk a little bit about Mars and our place in our solar system and how our next goal is to send people to Mars for many people in humanity. It's very important um, that we view Mars exploration in a new way. The idea of sending people to Mars really began, at least in earnest, with Dr. Werner von Braun. When the United States developed their space program with new rockets and new plans to go to the moon, he was already thinking about sending people to Mars and how to do it. They were, there were plans to send people to build, to grow, and develop on Mars. And so we've been thinking about sending people to Mars for a century now, at least seriously. And it's a very nice initiative. I mean, we want to do this because we have a romantic view of Mars. It's undiscovered, the undiscovered country, the land we haven't been to. It's a next, the next adventure. You know, the people we send to Mars are going to be heroes. They're going to face the elements, face nature that's so different from our own uh, that they they will have to just as struggle to survive, and even even do the most basic thing. So this is the new frontier for many people of exploration. We have companies that want to send people to Mars. We have nonprofits whose whole mission is to have a human space space uh, colony on Mars. This is what this is the next frontier. But we need to remember that not long ago, North America was the frontier of exploration. So it was Australia, the African continent, and many other parts of the world. It, not, it wasn't even that long ago, less, less, only a few centuries that our cities were settled, that our lands that we call the lands called Canada were, be, were farmed, terraformed, you might say, to suit the people coming. And in that frontier, we, we were able to do this as settlers by declaring it nobody's land or terra nullis. There were other philosophies, the doctrine of discovery, which meant that countries who found a land get to claim it, or manifest destiny. These were all doctrines designed to claim land and to take it for other countries, whether it was Britain, whether it was France, whether it was Germany, sets and so on. We, Terra Nullis was part of the goal to, to colonize the world. But this land was not empty. This land was full of many indigenous peoples and nations. Thou tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people lived on across North America. From the Biotok in Newfoundland to the Salish on the West Coast to Cree, Métis, Inuit, Anishinaabe, all, Dene, all throughout. You know, people lived across this land. But because they did not have rights, they did not have ownership as recognized by, by Europeans, the land wasn't declared theirs, it was taken. This is the same kind of frontier we talk about Mars. You know, we we did this array here in North America, driven by rights to farm, people trying to settle, people wanting rights to land to take land, people wanting to terraform. Huge swaths of North America were changed for farming. That is in, in fact a form of terraforming. And you know, it was driven by greed. People wanted mining rights, gold, silver, iron oil, this is part of that colonization. If we go to Mars, are we going to do, going to do the same thing there? Many people have, have raised the possibility that Mars would be great for doing things like asteroid mining. Because of its low gravity <clears throat> and proximity to the asteroid belt, one can you know, easily track asteroids, bring them to Mars, bring, land them on the surface, mine them, strip them, and send them minerals back to Earth in rocketry. It's, it'd be a cheaper operation than trying to do it directly on the asteroid or even bring the asteroid around Earth. So one of the reasons that companies, some companies want to settle Mars is for mining rights, is for resources. Are we going to do the same kind of resource extraction on Mars as was done in colonization in North America? Is 
is this part of our manifest destiny in the same way? As Charles Bolden once remarked, the human mission to Mars is today the ultimate destination in our solar system for humanity and as a priority for NASA. And that's part of our entire exploration program. What was, you know, that's great. That sounds wonderful. What was the, what was the goal of Marco Polo's exploration program? What was the goal of Christopher Columbus's exploration program? Are we just repeating the same colonization lies that we were told as children about, about European discoverers when we talk about Mars? Are we using the same language? Are we going to declare Martian law that is nobody's land? There's no, we don't have evidence that there's life on Mars, but we haven't looked everywhere. We haven't even looked much of anywhere yet. There's very possibly life existing beneath the surface of Mars in some form. Now, I don't think scientists really believe we're going to find m mammals or very highly developed creatures, uh, reptiles, fish, etc. But if there's single cellular life on Mars, do we have a right to take that land? Whose right, whose right is it to have Mars for themselves? Is it ours? Is it no one's? Do, do we have to use the language of Martian knowledge to, to claim it? Do we have a right to terraform Mars? Much of North America, much of the world has been terraformed in different ways. You know, through building of cities, through climate change, through just farming and settlements. If we send people to Mars, are we going to terraform it to suit us? Are we going to try to extract the water and make oceans? Are we going to try to build an atmosphere on Mars? Elon Musk has floated the idea of nuking Mars to help build, to help heat the planet and build it and, and create more outgassing to create an atmosphere. Do we have a right to do that? Do we have, is it in our place? We tend to think of Mars and going to Mars through the same language of colonization. We tend to think of, Mar the way we talk of Mars is exactly the same way as, as people have once spoken about colonizing North America or in other parts of the world. We need to think about how we talk about going to space, how we talk about going to Mars, sending people, settling on Mars, taking Mars, having rights on Mars. We need a language of space exploration that is inclusive of all people, not just the same people who have power and money. We need one that is ethical and supportive of the rights of, of people from across the entire Earth, but also the rights of whatever is on Mars, if anything. Even the land itself should have some rights. So, I just hope that as you're enjoying Mars, we think and look around and, re and remember that colonization is not a new, new phenomenon. That we look around and we remember that there are colonized peoples in, uh, on this land too, who should have a say in how we view Mars and how we will ever go to Mars. Well, thank you for your time.